Hey everyone, Dr. T here, and as you can see outside, it's pretty much a snow-filled day. Uh, school's out, businesses are closed, and so I'm spending part of my day doing some editing. And I, and I gotta tell you, today was an incredible day. Just by editing the videos I made with my guest, Dr. Marie Holowicek, I feel much better, and you'll see why. Uh, it's a four-part series. Um, we met down at VMX, and she so kindly donated her time to do some videos with me. And so the first one's about burnout and she starts talking about mindfulness and self-care and then the following videos she breaks down mindfulness she talks about self-care and she talks about how to implement self-care not only for yourself but for your team so enjoy them they're phenomenal especially for you you healthcare providers of any field whether it be human or veterinarian it'll definitely help you um, actually it'll definitely help anyone in any sort of job situation where you feel that there are stresses in your job so enjoy them and enjoy the snow if you're in the snow belt area. Roll intro. I'm your host, Michael Dr. T. Tequila, and a returning guest, a great guest, and it's not just because she's Canadian. <laughs> but she's she's phenomenal and, and she switched her, her avenue towards helping our profession to the wellness side is Dr. Marie Holloway Chuck. So welcome Marie, thanks for being here. Um, just to give you a little history for those of you who haven't listened to previous shows, is she is board certified in emergency and critical care. She has worn the hat of um, she was an assistant professor at the Ontario Veterinary College. She is a specialist. She's one of the rare guests I've had that actually come from a family of veterinarians. Most are statistical outliers from a human medical family or something completely unrelated, such as myself. No one's, no one's got into veterinary medicine in my family. So, so she, she's had experience from a young age about veterinary medicine and she's a contributing author. You're an editor, right? For the, she, she wears many hats and she, she's done wellness retreats. Um, all this while working as an medical, uh, emergency and critical care specialist every so often as well. So it's, it's just amazing. Um, but I think what's important and what really got me when I first met you was how you got into the wellness aspect. What happened in your life? Mm, thank yeah. you. Yeah, well, thanks. Great introduction, yeah. first of all. <laughs> <laughs> you know my bio you better me than bucks. I do. You me 20 bucks, <laughs> yeah, right. <hey? laughs> Yeah, you know, I think like many of us in the profession, um, we have periods in our life where we get to the point where we feel very burnt out. Yep. And um, that was definitely the case for me. Even though I grew up, as you said, in a family of veterinarians, my mom and dad are both veterinarians. I grew up working in my mom's general practice. Um, I, When I started my position at the Ontario Veterinary College, it was it was a steep learning curve for me. I went from resident to faculty member. Um, there was a lot of on call. There were late nights, very long days, a lot of responsibility, and I wasn't looking after myself. And I unfortunately got to the point where I decided to leave my position there after about five years. And in hindsight, you know, I thought I wasn't cut out for the job and, you know, I, I love the profession, but, you know, maybe I need to do something different. Um, I even thought maybe I just needed to be closer to family and so moving out to Western Canada where I grew up. And what I now know is that I think had I been taking better care of myself and implementing some of the things now that I talk about in terms of well-being, that maybe I wouldn't have left the job and or maybe after leaving the job I would have been able to look after myself more so so that it would have been um, life would have been more sustainable but you know it's funny because after I left that position and started doing you know self-employment work so locum work um, editing, all, all the different hats that you said, um, I very quickly became burnt out again. This ah, time okay. though... I was, was going to ask you, would you define yourself as being burnt out? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. absolutely. So burnout, for, for those of you who don't know, so the idea of burnout is related to the job, to the work that you're doing. So it's usually feeling overextended or underappreciated. Um, something associated with the job, so not with the work itself, like you might love being a veterinarian or a technician or a physician or whatever you do, but that you know your hours are too long. You work too many shifts in a row. Um, sometimes it's about the people that you work with. Sometimes it's about the resources that you have. You know, you feel like you're out of your comfort zone and having to do stuff that you don't feel totally familiar with. 
Um, or it can be the opposite, that you're doing stuff that is really super boring and remedial, and so you just get burnt out because you're like, oh, this is so boring, I can't even believe that this is what I'm doing. Both of those are, this is not what I signed up for. This Scenarios, is not right? what I signed up for, yeah. exactly, yeah. I love that. So, um, Burnout too, though, can be exacerbated by not looking after ourselves. And so for me, I noticed the signs and now I had the wherewithal, you know, to, to recognize when it was happening. And um, it was actually, I think I've shared this story before, but, you know, I was in a, a bad car accident, rushing. You know, I had come back from a conference and I was going to another conference to speak and was rushing to fix a chip in my windshield or something stupid and ironic like that because basically my car was totaled it was a really bad accident I had nerve damage all this other stuff it was a wake-up call told me I needed to slow down and told me I needed to make some sort of change that this wasn't going to be sustainable that leaving this job as a professor and moving out west you know hadn't solved all of my problems and that I would need to do something different and so um, that's when I really got into wellness and it was actually after my accident that I did my yoga teacher training as a part of my rehabilitation and recognized you know that yoga and meditation and mindfulness and proper sleep and all of these tools that we overlook um, are so necessary for us as care providers and you know I passionately talk about how important self-care is you know it, it's like the old adage with the oxygen mask you know when you get on the airplane and they're going through the safety requirements on and first. don your own oxygen mask before assisting anybody else right because if you are not looking after yourself as a care provider how am I possibly gonna look after everybody else and even for you those of you who aren't care providers if you're or I should say for animals but maybe for people in your life you know, same thing, you can't look after your kids, your spouse, your parents, your, you know, loved ones if you are not also caring for yourself. So that's, that's, that's a hard pill to swallow because you, you're, you, you always have to face with, well, A, what time can I make for this, right? Because I'm always doing this, but it is, I think a lot of, a lot of it from my perspective, this is from my perspective, is that as a practicing veterinarian to A, admit that we have to do self-care is yeah. tough because it is you know we're perfectionists right so you know this is what we were built for this veterinary world and this is part of what we have to deal with but i think that you know I, I i've had marie on the show enough times i know her well enough i just i just went through a well a sleep wellness uh, lecture with her. it was hilarious it was great it's fantastic because i was going oh okay i gotta do this change this change this change this but it, it it's one of these things that it's it's a lot about self-reflection i think we're getting better as professionals about talking about things like this and and she can definitely help you there. I think it's it's something that you have to just come to terms with. Um, totally. It's not normal to get four hours of sleep a night. Let me tell you, it's not normal. <laughs> and it's not normal to feel that anxiety and stress. And it's not just because we're veterinarians and that's the way the profession is and people treat us differently. It's it's There's a lot of things that you can do about that. Yeah, so it was, to me it's a lot of self-reflection and, yeah. and getting to, to, to understand and come to terms with this. But but I think it's, I think it's really neat how life throws you things and totally. makes a change. And everything the universe like is always, always has your back, as they say, you know, so, um, yeah, I think, yeah, paying attention to that, you know, and noticing, okay, this is, I'm, I'm in the same pattern where now I'm working just as hard as I was before and, you know, or I've changed jobs and I thought everything was going to be great and now I'm having this, these same feelings of anxiety and I'm struggling with my sleep and I'm struggling with these feelings of cynicism about the work that I do you know very classic signs of, of burnout and and recognizing it is our responsibility and and the people who you know set forth guidelines for care providers around self-care they say that they say it is nobody's responsibility but yours nothing can justify neglecting self-care and that it's actually unethical not to tend to self-care because self-care prevents harming the people we're trying to look after so and that it makes sense right because if you're not getting enough sleep and then you go to work you can make a mistake, yeah. right? Or, um, you know, any number of things can happen. And they show that. They show that sleep deprived healthcare workers have higher incidence of medical mistakes at work. So, yeah, we're all familiar with driving while you're sleep deprived as right. equivalent to being drunk. And um, Reese had a great story uh, in her talk. She talked about Ariana Huffington that she used to work on minimal sleep, but had a, a, she fell and injured herself. And that was her, her wake up call. And so she's a big proponent of getting the right amount of sleep. And I think. These are important things, but it's, it's believe it or not, it's little changes you can do 
little changes you can do that would, would definitely help you. But but I, I'm glad that this happened to you retrospectively because then I would never have met you. There you go. <laughs> so yeah. It's awesome. Everything it's awesome happens for a reason. Yeah. I'm glad too.